All right, this will be the last video we have. Uh, you should be able to answer the all the contingency table questions. Uh, this is actually question five from the homework that we're going to walk through. And now we're going to look at chi-square tests for independence. Um, the tests for homogeneity, uh, easy for me to say, um, we're not going to uh, address in this class. So we're just going to work on the test for independence. So you see I've highlighted, this is case three, the test, is all, the test always pre presents as a contingency table of at least size two by two. That is at least two rows and two columns. The row subjects and column subject are independent of each other and the rows or the rows and columns are related. That's your null and your alternative hypothesis. Um, the notation, we still have O for the uh, observed frequencies. E represents an expected frequency. R represents the number of rows. C represents the number of columns. And as before, the samples must be randomly selected. They must be represented as a frequency counts in a two-way table. Uh, and for every cell in the contingency table, the ex expected frequency is at least five. Uh, we've already talked about how to do the null and alternative hypothesis. That's how you calculate the test statistic, but we're going to do this with StatCrunch, and we're also going to see how to find critical values. Now, um, the contingency table test will give us the p-values, and that will help us to, to uh, formulate our conclusions. But essentially, it is the sample data does or does not provide sufficient evidence to suggest that a dependence exists between whether a student attends class or a student does not attend class, and whether a student passes the final exam or a person fails the final exam at a significance level of whatever it is. So uh, we're going to go jump straight into one of the questions. Uh, this is question five from the homework. Um, I have it listed as 10-4. I may have to come back and change that. Uh, the contingency table shows the results of a random sample of former smokers by the number of times they tried to quit smoking before they were habit-free and gender. At alpha equals 0 0.1, can you conclude that the number of times they tried to quit before they were habit-free is related to gender? Perform the indicated chi-square independence test by completing parts A through C below. So this is the table I've copied from... Uh, the problem, again, I think it's problem 10.5, not 10.4, so I may have to go back in and change that. Um, the number of times, here's my null and alternative hypothesis. The number of times former smokers tried to quit is independent of gender, which is independence is always the null hypothesis. And then the alternative hypothesis is the number of times former smokers tried to quit is dependent on gender. So... Can you conclude the number of times they tried to quit before they is related to gender? So the claim was the number of times for, former smokers tried to quit is dependent on gender. Um, that's it. So our claim is going to be in the alternative hypothesis. So we're going to have to, th this question is going to ask us to determine the critical chi-square value, different from the test statistic. And the way we calculate that is for degrees of freedom is R minus 1, which is the number of rows minus 1, times the number of columns minus 1, where the number of rows C, the number, where the R is the number of rows and C is the number of columns. We exclude the label rows and columns. For this problem, we have two rows and three columns. So 2 minus 1 times the quantity of 2 minus 1 times the quantity of 3 minus 1 equals 2. So our degrees of freedom is 2. So we're now going to use this information to, to find the chi-square critical value with the StatCrunch chi-square calculator. And here you see a screen. I'm actually going to work the whole problem through uh, after you see everything here. But I open the chi-square calculator. My degrees of freedom, 2, goes in here. My 0 0.1 for my level of significance is here. And remember, this is always a right-tailed test, so it's greater than. So 4.605 is my critical chi-square value. And remember, the test statistic chi-square, if it is greater than the critical value of chi-square, then you reject the null. But we're going to have the p-value, so we can use it with the, like we've been doing with hypothesis tests all along, we'll be able to use the p-value to make this call. So 
Um, we're going to show, I'm going to, when I pull up StatCrunch, I'll show you how we did that. And so uh, there's the table. When I do contingency table with a summary, and I have to select with the shift key down one, two, or three, four, or more, which is each of one of the columns. Um, the row labels are gender, which is we see right here. And then when I click compute, for my chi-square test for independence, I get a chi-square of 0 0.089. We can see that's well below the critical value, and we also see a very high p-value, so we know that we are going to fail to reject the null. So chi-square equals 0 0.089. The p-value is 0 0.9566. I fail to reject the null hypothesis. Conclusion, there is not enough evidence at the 10% level of significance to conclude that the number of times former smokers tried to quit is dependent on gender, because we could not reject the null hypothesis that says uh, that it's independent, which means we're saying that these are independent of uh, whatever's in that alternative hypothesis. So from here, I've got the question pulled up, so I'm going to go ahead and walk through um, doing this particular question. So here it is, let's pull me out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the data into StatCrunch. And here it is. Um, now the first thing I told you I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to go to Stat, Calculators, Chi-Square. I'm gonna put my degrees of freedom of two. And I'm going to change this to greater than, and I'm going to put 0.1 right, 0 0.1 right here. And when I click compute, I get 4.605, which is our critical chi-square. Again, we could use that to make our decision of whether we're going to reject or fail to reject, although with the p-value, we kind of won't need it, but the question requires you to know how to calculate. So... There is how you calculate your critical chi-square value using the chi-square calculator. Now, from here, let's go ahead and run our test. So I go to Stat, Tables, Contingency Table, and it's with a summary because we have the data summarized in these rows and columns. So I'm going to click that. There you're going to see that I have one row that is labeled, let's see if I can pull this over a little bit so maybe we can see the table. Oh, no, it's not going to. All right, let's do it this way. I can open the whole thing up. How about there? There we can see it. So you notice we have a, this is a column, this is a column, this is a column, and I need all three columns. The gender are labels. So now I can click Compute. And sure enough, there is my chi-square and there is my p-value. Um, so that's how you're going to do all the contingency table problems. This should you know, I, There's going to be like five of them, I think. Um, so from here, you should be able to handle all of this. And uh, good luck with it. And uh, let, remember, I'll be online tomorrow if you have any questions.